focus of course tonight is uh, the resumption of uh, what is uh, being called as a comprehensive bilateral dialogue between India and Pakistan. That's what's uh, been agreed upon uh, in Islamabad uh, with the External Affairs Minister there and to talk about it, uh, what it actually means for improving ties between India and Pakistan, between its people, uh, the countries. Uh, we have uh, Rajiv mm. Sikri with us, former Secretary of the Ministry, former Secretary East of the Ministry of External Affairs. Welcome, sir. What does this really mean uh, at first glance to you? Because uh, there will be those uh, who would be skeptical as to uh, what this really entails in the coming days. But uh, there is hope as well. I think we'll have to wait for uh, the external affairs minister's statement in parliament tomorrow to know fuller details. Uh, but uh, my initial reaction is that uh, we have uh, got now two streams of dialogue going. One between the two NSAs on terrorism and security related issues that mm -hmm. started at Bangkok and will now continued. And the second is the resumption of uh, the composite now called the comprehensive dialogue hmm. because it covers not just the eight subjects that were there earlier, but some other issues also. Yeah. So these two will go on simultaneously. I think it's, in, it's from an Indian point of view, it's, it's good that uh, uh, there is going to be a focused dialogue on terrorism hmm. uh, with a person on the Pakistani side uh, who has access to the Pakistani military. Right. So there, there are two professionals, Mr. Doval and uh, Mr. Janjua, who uh, will be reporting to the Prime Minister and <coughs> to the Army Chief in Pakistan and the Prime Minister in India, mm -hmm. who are the people that matter as far as terrorism and security are concerned. So in that sense, we've had our way. And Pakistan's had its way that, OK, we are going to talk about everything. Mm -hmm. The essence of diplomacy is to come away from the table thinking that neither side has lost. <laughs> and both have won. And both have won. So, you know. Win-win uh, situation. Yeah, so it's okay. Uh, we'll, we'll have this dialogue. Let's mm. see what actually happens on the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, winter is coming up, so, you know, the terrorism activity, the cross-border mm. infiltration will naturally slow down. Right. And the next few months, if let's see what happens uh, on the terrorism talks. Meanwhile, okay. the foreign secretaries okay. will meet and uh, see how to take forward the process, which has been going on for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And we were let's, let's hope uh, that things uh, remain quieter on the border and in the yeah. valley. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, there's been a reference to 2611 trial as well yeah. in Pakistan. Uh, there's an assurance that there will be speedier trial. That's uh, as an assurance, it's not new. But uh, are you hopeful that uh, this will now mm -hmm. also become uh, a, a regular point of engagement as far as those NSAs are concerned? Uh, something that you have said is uh, the biggest takeaway right now. Something that started for Bangkok will now be taken <coughs> forward. Yes, I think it will be taken forward. Uh, th that has been the point on which this government has been insistent that without addressing terrorism in the first instance, we can't move forward on other issues. Now, even in this joint statement, terrorism is one full paragraph and it comes before that. But I don't want to make an issue of it. Hmm. The point is that if Pakistan says that terrorism is uh, a concern for them also, let them raise their concerns on terrorism. Let's discuss it. Everyone agrees that terrorism is bad, needs to be countered. We've just had that, those statements at the Heart of Asia conference. Hmm. So uh, we need to have a focused discussion on terrorism. The question is whether Pakistan uh, wants to continue terrorism against India, but while condemning terrorism within Pakistan, hmm. what is its attitude on Afghanistan going to be? These are the things that, you know, are you going to have a segmented approach to terrorism? Or are you going to really look at terrorism in, in a wider context? And if mm -hmm. Pakistan were to start uh, uh, dealing with terrorism in a comprehensive manner mm. without distinguishing between so-called good and bad terrorists, mm. then maybe there is hope. Mm. Well, that's a big if. Uh, mm. Now, there's a lot of speculation around uh, this particular subject uh, before these talks came and the joint declaration mm. came. Uh, uh, there's still, I guess, room for speculation there about the Indo-Pak cricket series mm. and <coughs> it's not clear whether it's happening uh, or <coughs> still. I've just seen a statement by the Pakistani side that uh, it's not going to be resumed. I would imagine that the Indian side uh, feels, uh, I think with some justification, mm -hmm. that the atmosphere is not right for these talks. Let's see what happens on terror before we... For cricket? Uh, for cricket, yeah. Okay. Let's see what happens on terror. Hmm. before we have these uh, cricketing ties. Mm -hmm. Because if the terror issue is not addressed, then what's the point of having this false bonhomie and so forth on the playing fields? And that, I suppose, may be the thinking of the gun. Uh, what know. will be the litmus test <coughs> there as far as uh, Pakistan? You said it won't have that uh, uh, double, standards, uh, yeah. uh, double standards on terrorism. Uh, what will be the barometer that will 
you know, the first uh, marker <coughs> to indicate that uh, pa Pakistan's outlook on terrorism has changed? I think uh, the markers have to be uh, reduced level of terrorist activity vis-a-vis -vis India mm -hmm. and w their policy on Afghanistan. Let's not forget that uh, President Ashraf Ghani of Afghanistan uh, wanted to reach out to reached out to Pakistan mm -hmm. to cooperate with them, but he mm -hmm. was disappointed mm -hmm. uh, because the Pakistani policy. And could that marker also be action against Hafiz Saeed? Uh, Hafiz, Hafiz Saeed, uh, is, uh, th these are sort of uh, not the low-hanging fruit. Hmm, hmm. You Clearly, not, they're not. They're, they're not, not low-hanging fruit. The kind of uh, support that he has from the establishment, the yeah. military establishment. Yeah, I would itself, not. Uh, I would not hold my breath on Hafiz fruit. Saeed and Dawood Ibrahim. No. Hmm, hmm, hmm. But uh, you know, let's see. You know, let's be realistic. One has to proceed cautiously, step by step. Hmm. Which is why uh, Mrs. Swaraj's statement that. We will go at a pace with which Pakistan is comfortable. Mm. And what's happened today? Do you think it'll be a big uh, takeaway for all those uh, uh, leaders, uh, heads of nations as well? Ashraf Ghani was there uh, for the Heart of Asia conference. It's a big takeaway for all these leaders as well. Uh, better ties between India and Pakistan. It augurs as well for the entire Heart of Asian region. Oh, definitely. I, I, I have no doubt about and that. And there's because that promise I'm of working together to tackle terror comprehensively, having a program to collectively tackle terror as well. I, I they say that I'm, officials will have to meet now in 2016 before another meeting takes place in India now. India will host Yeah, it. exactly. So, you see, I believe that Pakistan and India are the two critical countries uh, for Afghanistan. Mm. And uh, if the two cooperate, then only will Afghanistan have peace and stability. And uh, it's fortuitous that, you know, this year's conference is being hosted by Pakistan. Next year will be by India. Mm. And uh, let's see. I mean, if Pakistan and India cooperate, and that is why Mrs. Mm. Swaraj rightly stressed, well, why don't you, you know, we, when, may, when we may have our differences, but why don't you let transit between Afghanistan and India? Mm. Because if Afghanistan is to be uh, connected, you know, to other parts mm. of India, one end of that connectivity have to be India. Mm -hmm -hmm. Well, I thought it was a big takeaway with what happened at Heart of Asia, this uh, thing about jointly tackling terror. And now uh, the fact that we're resuming dialogue, uh, that's like icing on the cake, isn't it? Uh, well, I mean, uh, jointly tackling terror, India and Pakistan is a separate issue. Mm. But the fact that terror has also figured in the heart of Asia uh, mm. documents. So has uh, Islamic State. Islamic Daesh, State. Which we refer to as Daesh. Yeah, so there is this Something that other Islamic danger, State doesn't which, like. which hopefully Pakistan also recognizes, that they can't keep on following the older old policies mm. without a blowback to Pakistan itself. They've had mm. many blowbacks. Mm. Uh, but uh, if they understand it and then they really change their policy, then only there is hope. But well, whether they will or not, I think we'll just have to wait and see. Well, let's see if that light has dawned indeed on Pakistan or I not. But thank know. you so much for joining us uh, this evening. And I'm sure we'll be tracking this very yeah. closely in uh, days to come as well. Thanks for joining us.